Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's World Hepatitis Day 2024, and the World Hepatitis Day is usually celebrated on July 28, highlighting the critical need for action against viral hepatitis. This year's theme is It's Time for Action. It focuses on addressing this major global health issue. Hepatitis poses a serious health risk, including liver inflammation, cirrhosis and liver cancer. Hepatitis B and C in particular can lead to chronic infections that significantly increase the risk of these severe conditions. Preventing these outcomes involve good hygiene practices, safe sex and avoiding needle sharing, as well as getting vaccinated where applicable. Efforts to eliminate hepatitis by 2030 aim to prevent these severe consequences and save millions of lives. Today, we'll be looking at the key preventive measures and also steps to ensure early detection and treatment among affected individuals. Now, joining us is Dr. Blossom Madwafoka. She's a public health physician and she's from the Lagos University Teaching Hospital. Good morning, Matt. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. All right, so I think let's just begin with um, hepatitis, what it is about and why it is important to raise awareness for this. So hepatitis um, is the, an inflammation of the liver. So the liver is one of the largest organs in the body. The, the liver is like a powerhouse of the body. It helps to break down all the things that we eat, all the substances that we consume, all the toxins that we consume, the medications you take. All of that is broken down in the liver. So the liver is a very, very important organ so hepatitis is when that the liver becomes inflamed actually hepatitis can be caused by so many different um, um, um reasons mm -hmm. example infections by bacteria viruses mm -hmm. so the particular kind of inflammation of the liver that we're concerned about is what we call viral hepatitis so that's when inflammation is caused by an infection of viruses. So there are five main types of viruses and luckily they are actually named alphabetically. So there's hepatitis A, B, C, D, and E. And each one is different and is transmitted differently. Some of them are transmitted when you eat contaminated food, um, drink contaminated water. Some mm. of them are transmitted when you have sexual intercourse without protection. Some of them are transmitted when you share infected needles. Some of them are even transmitted from mother to child. Mm. So how do you ensure that you prevent yourself from having this? Because if you have even said, you know, these are the ways to get it, how, how am I sure that, you know, even the needles, when I go to the hospital, the needles are clean mm -hmm. enough? Or how can I just prevent myself from catching it? Okay, so there's something we call levels of prevention. So there are layers of, of protection that you can provide for yourself mm. and you can take advantage of. So one of the first layers basically is what you just mentioned, like in hospitals to ensure that healthcare workers do not reuse uh, needles. Mm -hmm. They make sure they sterilize equipment before they use in patients. The next level of prevention is you as an individual Safe sex, very important. Use mm. protection when you have intercourse. Um, very, very important, uh, again, is get vaccinated. Luckily, we have vaccines for two of these um, um, hepatitis infections, mm. viral infections. So hepatitis A and hepatitis B, we do have vaccines for them. So you can actually get protected by those vaccines. Another level of, of protection is sharing of needles don't share needles mm. um for example if you're going to get your manicure pedicure use your own materials to to get your manicure um, pedicure make sure you don't share razors at home etc the next thing you can do is actually to get yourself tested because people actually don't realize hepatitis c has a cure currently there's actually a known cure that people need mm. to take advantage of yeah, and then amazing. early detection is key. If it's detected early, hepatitis A, hepatitis B, these individuals can get treatment and can actually live 
um, lung and prevent the onset of liver cirrhosis and liver cancer. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, people, I'm sure the people who are living with it, uh, do you have to be on drugs or medication for a long time if you already have this? Yes, yeah, so, so the, like I said, there are different types of hepatitis, biohepatitis. Yeah. So the ones that we're most concerned about are hepatitis B and hepatitis C mm. because they, they tend to lead to chronic disease, liver cirrhosis, which one, so which one of them? Which one of them has a cure already? Which so hepatitis C has a cure. Okay. Yes. So there's, a, there's an available cure for hepatitis C. For hepatitis B, these individuals can be put on medications, and they can actually delay the onset of liver cirrhosis and liver cancer. So pe these are things that people need to know about, and people need to take advantage of. But if you don't get tested, then you don't even know that you have it mm. and then you don't begin treatment so that's one of the reasons we're raising awareness mm. but are there several symptoms that you can see in your body like how do you even know that you know i might have this before i get tested that's that's a great question so some of the symptoms that come with hepatitis are some of the symptoms that mimic uh regular malaria symptoms like fever headaches mm. mm -hmm. but one key symptom that comes with um liver um hepatitis is yellowness of the eyes and yellowness of the skin mm. it's very characteristic of liver disease so if you start to have fever headaches all those so-called malaria symptoms and then you start to notice that your eyes are getting yellow your skin is getting yellow you're having abdominal pain you need to get yourself to a healthcare facility immediately and, and to get tested um, is there yes. any form of stigma or discrimination with this? Is there, you know how you hear of HIV or you hear of other yes. um, diseases, is there any form of stigma when it comes to hepatitis? There is definitely a lot of stigma surrounding hepatitis, particularly hepatitis B and C, because they can be sexually transmitted mm. or transmitted um, between injection drug users. For example, so because of for those reasons, there's a lot of stigma surrounding um, hepatitis B and C, and people don't. Some some people like they don't want to know if they have it. They just want to continue to live their lives, mm. sort of blinded. So there's a lot of stigma surrounding it, and we want to to stigmatize um, this illness so that people know that. People can actually get it just by simple interaction because it's actually quite very, very easy to um, to get infected with hepatitis B through testing your bodily fluids. It's actually very, very easy. That's why children playing together, sometimes they actually can transmit, transmit to one another without knowing, which is why we stress children, children babies getting vaccinated against hepatitis B within the first 24 hours that they are born so wow. that protects them if, for example if the mother has hepatitis b that protects that baby when the baby is born and then babies in once they start getting their vaccination we make want to make sure that they get vaccinated against hepatitis b so that they protect themselves when they are interacting with other people and they, they can easily get um, infected. So yes, we're stigmatizing it. We want to let people know that you can get tested, you can get treated, you can also get vaccinated. Mm. So let's talk about um, community involvement. How can communities, how can we come together to um, you know, ensure that we're raising awareness and also having preventive measures and even for advocacy groups as well? How can we all just fight um, hepatitis together? So, so I, I like this question because, for example, what we're doing right now, we're raising awareness right. about hepatitis B. We're saying these are the things you can do to protect yourself. It's not a death sentence. You can actually get treated. You can actually get cured from hepatitis C. So conversing with people in your network, very, very important. I was recently involved in a program with young people where we, we asked we ask a, a bunch of young people to come up with ways to push vaccination against hepatitis B in the first 24 hours of life 
how can we implement this at the local level? And these young people came up with such innovative ideas. So that these are some of the things that we're doing to sort of spread awareness about how we can protect ourselves, ourselves against hepatitis B. Speaking to people in the community, I've been involved in local communities where we've actually gone out with megaphones to some rural wow. areas to spread these messages. So there are different ways that we can spread messages on social media, very important. I use my social media platform to spread this message. The traditional media, just like we're doing radio, etc. we need to spread the message. You can protect yourself against hepatitis B. Get vaccinated if you don't have the disease already. If you do have the disease, get tre treated and you can live a very long, happy life. That is amazing. I think awareness is always important because it's education. It's yes. letting people mm -hmm. um, know what this is about and having to protect themselves from it. Protected. But let's talk about the role of the government. Um, so, for mm -hmm. instance, if someone has this, can they walk into any hospital and get treated? How accessible is treatment and even the vaccines as well? Okay. So, you, you raised an important question. So, I'll start with the vaccines because that's sort of one of the first levels of of protection yeah. so for our children the vaccines are free mm. so it's part of what we call the national program on immunization every child gets the vaccine for free all the doses mm. so but for adults it also we encounter the problem of access so this is one of the reasons that we're pushing for universal health coverage so that mm. people can have access to healthcare regardless of their level of income, level of education, where they live. Yeah. So it it present it pre, pre, uh, pre, it presents a barrier to access to healthcare. I'll give you an example. One of the security guards that works in the hospital where I work at was said he tested positive for hepatitis B, and he could not afford treatment. Mm. And we sort of had to crowdfund to actually get him to the next level of test that he needed to do before getting treatment. So these are the problems that we're trying to solve. Universal health care, investing in primary health care so that people at the grassroots can get health care when they need it. Also, health insurance, spreading the message about health insurance. Legal State has... Um, viable health insurance um, program that people can take advantage of, of even the Na National Health Insurance Authority. These are things that people can take advantage of so they can get some coverage and get some assistance to aid treatment uh, against hepatitis B and even other diseases. Hmm. So, you, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that the Lagos state government is doing something, but I just even hope that in Nigeria, anybody um, from anywhere can just walk into a hospital and get treated, regardless of yeah. um, their income or the tax bracket that they fall, exactly. that they fall into. Um, but let's just talk yes. about the role of technology, because there might just be some people who... Um, do not even want to walk into a hospital. So how can technology help when it comes to um, preventing, when it comes to diagnosis, when it comes to treatment? Are there platforms, are there um, places that you can just check, even from your phone, text messages that you can just mm -hmm. use to have this, um, this detection in, in court? Okay, so, well, one of the gifts that the COVID-19 pandemic gave us was to, to broaden telemedicine. So we do have telemedicine in different parts of the world, even in Nigeria, believe it or not. Yeah. So people can, so if you have symptoms, you can, if you have access to one of those platforms, you can have some kind of preliminary provisional diagnosis. There you can now proceed to get tested. One of the things that has happened in the last few years is what we call rapid testing. So it's like a point of care test where you can actually just, get, with a drop of blood, you can get tested for hepatitis B, like mm. right on the spot. So that's one thing that technology has also given us. That's There's amazing. There's one other um, technology that is quite fantastic. Self-testing for hepatitis C is also available. It's available in other parts of the world, not in Nigeria yet. But these mm. are things that 
um, technology is making it easier for people to people that don't want to show up at a health facility, for example, to get tested because of the stigma surrounding these um, illnesses, they can actually get tested at home with self-testing kits. So these are things that technology has provided for us. But at the end of the day, you still need to make yourself available to a healthcare provider to give you the right treatment for your illness. Mm. So how how can you how do you think that the government can help with funding? Because I'm sure with all of this, um, just like how you've said, there's the test kits in other parts of the world, but we don't have it here in Nigeria. So how can the government, you know, um, fund all of these things to ensure that anybody can just even get tested from home? Um, what can we do? What, how, how, how do we speak to the government? How do we let them know that this is necessary? Because, of course, if someone is suffering from uh, hepatitis B or C, um, their lives can just be cut short. So what's the role mm -hmm. of funding, especially when it even comes to research and development as well? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a very important question, and this is something we've been speaking about for decades now. We, th there's something that we call the Abuja Declaration, where, where African countries came together in Abuja in, 20, in 2001 yeah. and sort of made an agreement to devote 15% of GDP to healthcare. Mm. I mean, right now, Nigeria is, I think, we're at 4.1%. Wow. So it's insufficient for funding healthcare. I mean, there's no other way that you can look at it, it's insufficient. We've been pushing for increase in healthcare funding to GDP for so many years. And honestly, it's not just the uh, hepatitis B treatment, all other programs. That's why in a lot of cases, we lag behind in our uh, indices because we're not putting our money where our mouth is, mm. if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I hope that, you know, the government, they understand the importance because if you do not have um, citizens with good health care, then that means you don't even have yes. a, a country in the first place to even rule or exactly. to even lead. Yes, so exactly. I hope that we start to prioritize um, the health care system in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And if we yes. are not meeting our quota, it's important that we start mm -hmm. to meet our quota here. But since we're talking mm -hmm. about, you know, World Hepatitis Day, what do you think is the call to action for this year? So the call, call, call to action is it's, it's time for action. Mm. So like you, 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 you pointed out some of the deficiencies um, from a government stand standpoint in terms of policy, universal health coverage deficiencies, etc. Mm. So at the end of the day, I want to speak to the individual, right? Yeah. Because we can't you if you can't control what the government does, at least, at least you can control what you do as yeah. an individual. Yes. So there are things that you can do to protect yourself. Mm. So like I said initially, number one, get vaccinated. Hepatitis B has a viable vaccine. You can get vaccinated for hepatitis B. For babies that are born within the first 24 hours, this is a low-hanging fruit because that vaccine is free. Mm -hmm. A mother can be given that a, a baby can be given that vaccine within the 24 first 24 hours of life and protect that baby from getting liver cancer later in life. That is such a low hanging fruit. Another thing that individuals can do is get tested. You 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 just have to know if you have this disease or not. Get tested so that you can start treatment if you do have it. Other things that you can do, don't share needles. Mm. Safe sex, that, is, that one is so clear. Safe sex, very, very important. These are things that you can do as an individual to protect yourself. Yeah. So that while we're sitting and saying, okay, government needs to do, do that, you ask yourself then, what do I need to do as an in individual? These are things that you need to do. And last but not least, spread the message to everybody in your network so that people are aware of things that they can do to protect themselves. 
Thank you so much. Well, I hope that people are listening and I hope that they start to spread the awareness, they protect themselves, they, you know, go to the hospitals, get tested, um, practice safe sex and all of the things that you've highlighted. Do not share needles. So we hope that since we're celebrating the World Hepatitis Day today, um, we're all raising our awareness, we're all putting our hands together and saying that we want to fight this um, once and for all. <clears throat> Anyways, we want to say thank you so much, Dr. Blossom. It was lovely having a conversation with you on this thank you very much thank you so much Ruben, for having me thank you Okay, yeah. we'll be speaking with Dr. Blossom Madwa Fokar. She is a public health physician in the Lagos University Teaching Hospital. And we've just been talking about the World Hepatitis Day and addressing the global health issues, the global health challenges in our nation. This is where we have to wrap it up on The Breakfast today. Thank you so much for having The Breakfast with me. My name is Rume Paulson. Have an amazing day.